Hey, Power Platform admins. Do you know everything that your team is doing? Or worse, is your team doing everything that they need to be doing? Today, we talk with Andres and Steve from PowerCat about a power app that they've built. It's loaded with nearly 100 admin tasks that span Power Platform. Measure what you do, help assess staffing levels, and better coordinate with other teams using the Power Platform Administration Planner. Today on PowerCat Live. Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Topness with the PowerCat team, and today you can tell from the t-shirts I'm here with two of my fellow PowerCats, Andres and Steve. Hey, you guys. Hey, hi there. Hey, Phil. Hey, Andres. So we often talk about how citizen developers are the ones that push the platform forward, but today we're talking about Power Platform administration. What are the admins doing? Yeah, the role of the admins sometimes is not valued enough, and, and they actually have a lot of work. Uh, increasingly, the platform has a lot of features that allow you to govern and administer the platform. So we can we can talk all day about them, but you know things like DLP environments, uh, cross tenant isolation. So what we basically try to do through the tool is provide some visibility over these tasks, uh, the time that we think it takes, and and basically provide a bit of insights of of how important their role is. And now you know this tool focuses on Power Platform administration. Sometimes these tasks involve other people, like uh, Azure Active Directory or something like that. Like how do how does this tool help those those teams coordinate? So in the tool, we help um, define what we call the core admin team, which is the Power Platform admin team. And we also define what we call the peripheral uh, admin team. So if you have teams that manage your Azure AD or you have security teams, then the, the tool will help you um, identify tasks that require more than one team. So talk a little bit about how the Power Platform Administration Planner brings a little, all of this together then. What we built is a, a model-driven app around it to, to manage these tasks so you can uh, customize uh, the, the data that we're shipping uh, with the solution itself. Uh, there's going to be a CSV as part of the download as well that you can use to import what we consider the basic set of tasks that you're going to need to perform. But again, these are having, um, it, it has data basically that we consider is right, but, but not, might not fit for every customer, right? So, so through the model driven app, we expect you to basically edit that data and make it work for yourself. So things like the duration of the tasks, the anticipated uh, frequency that the task is going to have, whether it's ad hoc or recurrent, the kind of persona, skill set, the complexity around it. And then what we're shipping as well is a, is a Power BI uh, dashboard, which basically is what brings all the, all the beauty to the solution, all the insights. And did I hear you right? You didn't just build a schema. You, this actually ships with a bunch of sample tasks that I can use as a starting point for my own organization. Exactly. Yeah. When you when you download the the CUE toolkit, you will see a new solution added to it, which contains the schema that we we're talking about, and then a CSV file that contains all of those tasks. Uh, again, to just pre-populate that schema with with all the common tasks that we've been gathering from different customers and teams that we work with, that we consider are quite fundamental to the governance of of the of the of the platform, the administration of the platform. That's a ton of knowledge right there. Now, you've got almost 100 tasks. This sounds you know, like very sophisticated customers have built this. Is this tool only for experienced customers, or should new customers be looking at this too? So I think um, Steve and I observe both cases. In my case, I was working with customers that were starting in the platform and were asking me questions around um, you know, what, what is it that they need to do in the platform, whether they're staffed well enough or not, what do they need to skill, do they need to hire other skill sets that they might not have in the team? So, so I think for new customers that are looking to onboard in the platform, this is going to be really useful. But I think Steve have, has, has a different example of customers that are not that new to the platform. Yes, exactly. So one of the customers I've been working with, they, they were mentioning how they're, they, they feel like they're, they're always putting fires out. They're, they're you know, struggling mm -hmm. to, to move forward with project work. Um, so the, the dashboard really um, gives, calls out a number of points uh, where, where teams can look at the work that they're doing, um, especially the proactive and reactive balance piece. That's really where we're showing you all of the tasks that you're saying are reactive. Um, and what we're encouraging you there to do is to um, look for opportunities to automate it or outsource it or innovate your own solution to try and make yourself um, more proactive. So then you mentioned the dashboard. Talk about some of the things that I could get as an administrator or give to my management. What are some of the insights I'd get out of this dashboard? Yes, yeah, so we've structured the dashboard in a way um, that that hopefully gives you the opportunity to, to really quickly identify 
uh, what's what's happening in your team, the the impacts that outsourcing is having. So um, not just the number of tasks and the hours that that would save you, but also the kind of experience levels that uh, would be required to complete the tasks. And the story there is the same for automation. And then um, we we also have a, a proactive and reactive segment of the of the dashboard that calls out all of the tasks that are re, uh, reactive um, and gives you like a percentage gauge to show you uh, where whereabouts you are. Uh, um, then the, the the final sections of the screen really call out the personas in the team. So the the, uh, the the amount of effort all up that would be required to perform the tasks and the persona that would perform it. So if you've got a, an environment admin over a um, you know a, a power platform admin, for example, and we do the same for the peripheral tasks. So we, we show how reliant on other teams you are by counting how many tasks, for example, rely on the security team uh, to give you give, give you an overview. And then the final piece is really um, for probably the you know the, the the more bird's eye view around what's going on. And, and we group the tasks by its category. So we're able to show you how much time you're spending looking at reporting or dealing with licensing or adding capacity, for example. And you mentioned that this also includes the persona and the skill level, as well as like the number, the number of employees doing this or number of full-time employees. Exactly. So will this help me then plan out how large my team should be and what it should be composed of? Yeah, that's what we're hoping. We're hoping that it will give you a good uh, you know, estimation as to what, what your team needs to look like in terms of numbers, but also the, the levels of experience that you need. So uh, if you need um, you know, junior engineers uh, rather than senior yeah. engineers and kind of that type of thing. So if I'm an administrator, I'm feeling completely overloaded. Will this help me make the case to my management? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so if one of those overloaded engineers is sitting here watching right now, what do they do to get started? Yeah, so they, um, as we said, the solution is part of the COE toolkit. Um, so you could literally go ahead and, and hit download uh, of that COE toolkit package. And as I said before, it, it will contain two new things as part of it. One is the solution itself that you can go ahead and import and, and the environment where you're looking to set up this. There's no cross dependencies right now with the COE toolkit at all. So you can definitely set it up in a new environment if you just want to have a look into it. And there, there's another part to it, which is the CSV file that we spoke about before that contains all the pre-populated list of tasks with all of its metadata that, that we were just walking you through on. And what's next for this? How does, the, how does this tool evolve over time? When we started working on the tool, we also thought about whether or not we should ship uh, functionality to do like task tracking, like actually generating the actual tasks in Dataverse to assign those to the people involved in each of these specific roles that we were tracking the tasks against. But um, we have other thoughts as well on where this could evolve, but it's going to really depend on the feedback that we get from the community and the organizations using the solution. So we're really, we're all ears basically for, for the users that are going to start testing this out to, to understand where they would like to see this go. And what's the best place for people to provide that feedback? Yeah, there's various forums, I think. Uh, first of all, uh, we obviously have the GitHub repository where the COE toolkit is in constant development. So head there and, and send all of your suggestions that you know, as you normally would do for the COE toolkit. And you can always add comments below and the links that, uh, that Steve and Andres described will be down there too. Steve, Andres, thanks for being here. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks.